Hey, welcome back to the show. In the past six months, Cameron Vandenberg's been the fastest breaststroker in the world, both in short course and long course pools. And he's put his name among the top contenders for gold at this summer's World Championships in Rome. And joining us now from Pretoria, South Africa, on Skype, is Cameron Vandenberg. Cameron, welcome to the Morning Twim Show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So what's it like being a world record holder? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> it feels pretty good. It's, uh, it's something that I've always wanted to achieve in my life, and uh, it's one of the goals that I've always had. And just to achieve it, it's a great uh, master, and, and I'm, I'm just over the moon to have achieved it. All right, we're going to show some of your swims for the audience, and I want you to talk first about the short course world records, which you set on the, uh, on the World Cup Series mostly last winter. Uh, short course seems to be your more comfortable environment, uh, but now you're getting to long course as well. Talk about your, the difference between you swimming those two formats. Yeah. Um, the short course, <clears throat> I think it was a lot easier coming off of Olympics. Um, Olympics, I didn't do as well as I wanted to do, and, and uh, I knew that I could do better. And, and just to prove to myself, and I think uh, the rest of the world, that you know, I, am, I am a force to be reckoned with. And, and we went over to, the, to the, the short course, and I did really well there. And I was really, I actually surprised myself. You know, I, I didn't think that I would swim that well. And, uh, you know, coming this season in, uh, obviously, you know, being Olympics and, and World Championships is, is long course. Um, I've adjusted to the long course. And uh, and it's funny because, you know, a lot of the coaches actually say that, you know, they think that I'm actually a better long course swimmer than short course. And, uh, you know, I think I'm just proving to myself as well, just as I go along, um, that, 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 you know, that could be true. And uh, I've just changed coach recently to a Japanese guy, um, Norimasa Hirai, which was... Kitajima's uh, old coach, and uh, you know we we now focusing on the hundred and the two hundred for Beijing 2012, and uh, oh, sorry for London, and uh, <clears throat> in the process, uh, obviously we, we've already ch um, started changing the stroke, and the stroke has changed from um, the World Cups, and I was surprised actually how quickly uh, I've uh, adapted to the stroke, and and I've already settled in with it, and it's not 100 percent correct yet, but uh, I'm I'm really really feeling comfortable with it, so. Uh, and as well, just for the fifties, you know, um, you know, I uh, some people, I think, the media got a bit out, out of context where I said uh, this was the last time that I'll be swimming the fifty meters breaststroke. Um, it's the last time now in Rome together will be the the last time that I'm focusing on it as a main race, and after that I'll be focusing more on the hundred and the two hundred being Olympic events. Yeah, because even even though in a lot of international events you do get to swim the fifty. The fact of the matter is most swimmers are judged by you know, their Olympic performances. So do you have to find yourself focusing specifically on those events that you can actually swim in 2012? Yeah, I, that's correct. You know, I think it is a pity that, uh, that 50s are, are not in the Olympics. I think it's such great spectator value. And um, I mean, you know, you always see when, when the world's greatest stand up for a 50 meter dash, it's, you know, it's, the room is so quiet, you can hear a pin drop, you know, it's just so exciting and you can feel the tension in the air and, uh, you know, hopefully in, in London they bring it in, but uh, due to that fact at the moment that it's not there, I am changing now to do the 100 and the, and the 200 breaststroke as, uh, you know, it is seen as the more prestigious and uh, sort of important events. Now, Kit, do you have the distance for a 200? Because obviously people are going to look at you breaking world records in short course meters and in the 50 meter long course, they're going to think this guy can't do the 200. Can you? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, you know, that was one of the big reasons as well why I've just changed coach now. I was previously with Doug Langer and, and he did uh, very well for me. And uh, But I just felt like I needed a bit of a change. And, and what better coach to go to than the guy that's uh, coached Kitajima for about 15 years and, and he's the best pro striker alive. So I really, I start now, actually tomorrow, you know, I've had a bit of a holiday, but uh, I start with, with more of a distance program and it could take me a little while to get used to, but I think uh, if I can combine the speed that I have and the power and, and uh, the new stroke and, and just a bit of endurance, I think uh, the combination could be pretty lethal. Now, is he your only coach? Because I've been told you kind of have a team of coaches from you know f to focus on different things. Well, I do have a gym coach at the moment. Um, you know, his name is Nark. He works here in South Africa with me, and uh, you know he's, he's really one of the uh, the best gym coaches that I've ever had. And, and he really works well and, and knows. Uh, he has such a passion, and he really sort of uh, gets me to work hard, if you can say. And, and he really has 
he really does a lot of research and and uh, I think the biggest thing as well which what uh, what gets wrong is coaches don't have enough communication between each other so the gym coach doesn't have good communication between um, between the uh, the swim coach and and also I do a bit of like gymnastics as well just for a bit of strength and and uh, and core work and you know they all speak to each other and uh, I think that's why I've done so well because everything just matches up in the end of the day and uh, and uh, you know I also have Rake as well at the moment and um, with at Ra- the training Ra- facility Ra- he's Yes, that's that's correct. Uh, he's helping me out at the at the, at the training facility as uh, because you know Nori trains in, in Tokyo, and every now and then uh, I'll fly over to Tokyo for about two or three weeks just to go check up. And and uh, at the moment, what I do is I I um, send all the videos um, and the the results and and all the the tests and uh, you know in training to Nori, and you know he checks it out, and we speak every second or third day on Skype as well. So. Everything uh, is done, you know, I work over Skype actually a lot, and uh, we all communicate pretty well together. Hmm. Wow, that was not possible 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Talk about Even, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, I mean, you know, you know, I'm here in Africa, but uh, luckily we have internet. Though, so. uh, a lot of the South Africans we've seen, especially on the men's side, have come over to the States, schools like University of Arizona, for training. Why did you stay? I think the biggest reason is uh, I just love South Africa. You know, I'm uh, I'm really patriotic and, and I just love my country and uh, I uh, yeah I, I just love the people here. You know, I I, I travel a lot and and uh, you know I don't think I've ever been anywhere anywhere else in the world where I love it so much and every always when I go overseas, you know, I just have this real hunger to come home and I think if I did go to America. Um, which I think you know there are great opportunities and and uh, but I just not for me because I just miss home too much and and as well you know it's worked very well for me on the side um, you know I, I was 18 years old and I swam in 2007 the the world championships in in Melbourne and I got a bronze medal and uh, I was thinking of going over to the states but I just recently you know I did so well there that I just decided right well let me stick on for another year see how it goes and uh, just since then it's been going from strength to strength and you know they say why miss with the why miss with the uh, winning formula yeah. Well, Cameron, we want to open up the floor to some questions from our viewers, so I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Cummings, our associate producer, and he has those questions. Jeff? Hey, Cameron. Uh, one of our questions came in by email from Chris Tobin, and um, from one breast circuit to another, I'd really like to know the answer to this. What changes have you made to your stroke to succeed and excel at the world record holder level? I think... Recently, what I've done is uh, before I used to swim with my um, biceps and pecs, so uh, those were the majority of uh, the muscles that I was using. And what I've done recently, especially to change over to the long course, I've changed the stroke where it's sort of almost a bit of a fly stroke where I use my lats and my scapula and my back um, as the main muscles. And uh, because the biceps and the pecs are such big muscles, they get tired very, very quickly and they fatigue. And uh, I just felt that, you know, like I went to Beijing and, and I went 59 in the heat and uh, and it just takes sort of too long for my muscles to recover because uh, they get tired too quickly. So I found that, you know, changing changing the muscle groups, say, you know, with lats, um, they recover recover a lot quicker and they don't fatigue as much. So something like that and, and also, you know, just sculling. Um, I think people don't uh, realize the importance of sculling because if you have a good feel for the water, um, you know, it helps and you can pick up the stroke rate. You know, some people always say, you know, wow, how do you have such a good and a compact and a, a quick stroke rate? But, uh, you know, slipping in the water and it's just simply due to that real good feel and, you know, I get that from sculling. It's definitely the kind of thing you need from a sponsor, that's for sure. For sure. All right, one more question from our viewers. Uh, how popular is swimming in your country and do you feel it's growing in popularity after the Olympics? Swimming is uh, it's not as popular um, in South Africa as I would say as in say Australia. Um, team sports are, are very very popular on this side, and uh, things like rugby and cricket and soccer, um, should I say, take uh, the limelight. And, and you know, it's only recently um, after you know after Olympics, I think it, it sort of rocketed swimming off a little bit. And and you know, as as swimming as as we get up and up, you know, it, it's uh, it's becoming more well noticed, shall I say. And you know, um, when I broke the world record now the other day, it was actually a, a major achievement because, you know, rugby is such a big thing and there was a, a huge game. You know, we have uh, something called the the Super 12 and um, the two, one of the two biggest teams, they played here. And, uh, you know, 
for me, um, you know, I took the back page news, you know, world record camera from the Berg, and there was a big picture of me, and normally that would always be rugby. So, you know, just small things like that show that swimming is on the rise, and people are starting to notice, and uh, and it's, I think it's also up to, to people like me and uh, and Roland and Rake and, and all the other, you know, great swimmers that we have to keep doing well and keep breaking world records and, and to get swimming noticed in South Africa. Thank you very much to the viewers for our questions. Hey, Cameron, before we wrap up, so you're training with Reich. You're the current world record holder. I mean, Reich's obviously a legend around there, but uh, who, gets, uh, who, who gets more autograph requests between you two down there? <laughs> um, well, after my world record now, I think we're, uh, we're about tied. <laughs> you're catching up. All right. Cameron, thanks a lot for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot for having me. I enjoyed it.